Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today, a very special 49ers news and rumors video. It's special because we are officially in training camp season, baby. We finally, finally are back to essentially real football as all the guys are up there in California getting everything installed putting the pads on, getting to work, and the 49ers, again, are officially in training camp. Again, depending on this video, they would have been in there a couple days now. They would have been in pads for a couple days, depending on when you watch this video. But as of right now, they're there, they're working, and we have plenty of new training camp storylines to jump to today because there's been a lot of stuff happening inside the 49ers camp. Let's go ahead and jump right in. This is a great story, the first one that we have here. So Joe Staley... Right? Everyone recognizes him, elite offensive lineman for us, and Nick Bosa are actually kind of bonding and working together a lot at training camp. So, the 49ers held their first padded practice on Monday, and Bosa put the pads on literally for the first time since September. I mean, essentially, last time he had real pads on in real game-type situations. I know it's still training camp, but the last time he had real pads on in this kind of situation was back in September with Ohio State pre-injury. So, it's been a while. So, first off, Great to just see him in pads on the field doing work. But Staley had a Veterans Day off, yet still came out in the morning to work one-on-one -on -one with Bosa. Like, this is, it was super cool because they would literally would line up and Bosa would stand there and they would do pass rushes, they would do run blocking, and Staley would try to, you know, grab him by the pads and set him up and show him what he needs to do for inside technique, outside technique, just working with the young pass rusher to try and get him, you know, hopefully moving a little bit faster and moving up in terms of his skill set earlier on than a lot of people would overall expect Nick Bosa to be at during the first week of training camp. So great to see the veteran Staley doing that for Nick Bosa. Bosa was asked about it after practice and said, quote, we'll throw it up on the screen here. We built a really good uh, relationship. He's a super nice guy. I don't usually be nice to offensive linemen, but it's hard not to be nice to him. He's such a good dude. And he's been a really good influence on me. It's good to, it's good to go against one of the best who, who ever did it. Any reps I can get against him are good reps for me. Again, this is just a great story right off the bat. We need Nick Bosa to be a good pass rusher this year. And I've talked about on the 49ers report many, many times that history, at least the past 10 years, shows first round, you know, defensive ends who are highly touted coming into the National Football League tend to be okay their first year. I mean, you got to go back to like Bradley Chubb uh, in Denver to have someone who had double digit sacks, but like Miles Garrett, Derek Barnett, these are guys that are good pass rushers now. But in their rookie year, they had flashes, but were not, you know, elite talent that really produced for for the teams on the field because they averaged like five, six sacks in their first year. So Bosa could go that trend, which is fine. You know, it doesn't have to be elite year one. But if we could get him to rise up and be even better than a lot of people expect him to be in his first year, you know, eight, nine, maybe even ten sacks this year. Oh man, could be game changing for the 49ers on that defensive line. But it's just great to see Staley and Bosa working together because a guy like Staley has dealt with a lot of pass rushers, right? He's an older veteran. He doesn't have to go out and help Nick Bosa. It was his veteran day off. He's supposed to be resting, relaxing, doing whatever he wants to do that's not on the football field. Instead, he's out there, he's working, and you just heard Nick Bosa's quote they're bonding, they're building that good relationship. I love to see it. Question for you guys How many sacks do you think Nick Bosa will have this year? Um. Five to six would be kind of realistic. I think eight to 10 would be like, whoa, big year. I mean, we're talking about rookie of the year if you're getting 10 plus sacks as Nick Bosa. We'll see what happens, but I'm curious how many sacks you guys think Nick Bosa will have. Also, be sure to subscribe if you have not already to our 49ers official Chat Sports YouTube page. Much like Tom with the Cowboys, much like Mitch with the, uh, the Raiders, we now have a 49ers YouTube page specifically for you guys, only 49ers stuff. And so you can watch it here on Chat Sports and subscribe to Chat Sports as you should be. But if you are not subscribed to the 49ers report right now on YouTube, just type it in your search bar, www.chatsports.com forward slash 49ers. It'll take you right to the page. Subscribe and all this great content will be there just for you 49ers fans. We're building something big here, right? So go subscribe. I always say this, like 10,000 of you guys watch this each week. We need to get at least a thousand to go down right now. Pause the video, search it, subscribe. Boom, we're good to go. That way you're always ready to go for the latest 49ers content put out by me and Chat Sports here on YouTube. All right, back into the practice headlines from training camp. This one's interesting. Jalen Hurd, right? Many people. Jalen Hurd's a very polarizing rookie because we're not sure what he's going to be like. First or third round draft pick. It's like, all right, do we spend too much? Do we spend too little? How great is he going to be in his first year? He's actually been kind of a headliner at practice in a good and bad way. So just the other day, he got into two fights in one 
practice. The reports are saying that it kind of started because he's really making it kind of himself against the world mentality. Now, the good news is what's kind of lost in all the Jalen Hurd is fighting storylines you can see online right now is that he is absolutely flying. He's giving 110% and he's working right now. Like he is attacking head on. And both of these fights came when he was blocking downfield, which again, depending on if it actually, again, I wasn't there. I didn't actually get to see this happen. I just was reading off up on what happened as well and talking to people. But apparently he's blocking way down downfield, which cornerbacks don't like in general because the play might be going somewhere else. But that shows the herd's working, right? And he's not taking anything for granted and trying to prove it. It looks like he has a chip on his shoulder right now. Again, you've been seeing the stats pop up on your screen for Hurd last year. Remember, he did play a little running back. That's why I'll throw some mixed up stats here. 48 rushes, 209 yards at Baylor last year. Three rushing touchdowns. Not again, still at 946 receiving yards. This to me is an excellent story and an excellent news for you guys because so many people, like I said, are curious what Jalen Hurd is going to look like this year for the 49ers. Now, Hurd was drafted a lot higher than a lot of people thought he should be. Again, I went to Baylor. I did the whole, you know, looking at him and said, hmm. Fifth, sixth round, someone's gonna get, gonna get a steal. Niners spent a third round draft pick. So I think that kind of gave him a chip on his shoulder because people were like, mm, might have overspent. Now he's going into camp to being like, hey, I'm here, I belong here, I be I'm worth a third round draft pick, I'm gonna prove it. And he is locked in and giving 110% right now. So if you read the whole fight stuff, and it's not like, you know, we're decking each other, it's pushing and shoving, it's camp fights, it's fine. But don't let it get lost on you that it was because Hurt is out there balling in a me versus the world mentality that's really, really turning heads right now at 49ers camp. Now, Jalen Hurt, question for you guys. Will he have more than, let's just say, 500 yards receiving this year? Okay, because that, that, that to me is a very e good over under for Hurt in terms of receiving yards. 500, yes, more, or 500 less, or 500 or less yards? Let me know in the comments down below. But I'm pumped. This is this, this was good first news from the first couple of practices regarding Jalen Hurd, who could have struggled early, which we'll talk about other wide receivers in a second that have been struggling. Eh, it's not a good sign. Other good news. I mean, this is ridiculous, right? The good news is overflowing from 49ers camp. You would think that we're having the best camp out of any team in the National Football League. Now, again, like, everyone has good news. But... This is actually some good news revolving around Solomon Thomas. So I read multiple reports and saw multiple uh, uh, videos of Solomon Thomas working at training camp. He is turning heads and so far is having an excellent first couple of days. Remember, Solomon Thomas, the much maligned former first round draft pick who people were speculating could be a trade option during the NFL draft this year, didn't happen. He's going to be on the squad, most likely in this number two depth chart, depending on where he wants to line up, where he backs up defensive tackle, right defensive end. There's a lot of good players in front of him. D4, Bosa, Armstead. Uh, so uh, Buckner's in there as well. But as of right now, maybe Solomon Thomas is having a, a, a changing off season where he has a monster training camp and gets back to that first round grade that we all expected him to be. And there, I found this quote from Chris Binderman of the Sacramento Bee talking about both or talking about uh, Solomon Thomas. Quote: So it wasn't entirely surprising to see the defensive line come out of the gates quickly when San Francisco held its first padless training practice. Again, this is a good days back to Saturday. The first few moments of team drills were highlighted by fired up Solomon Thomas beating his blocker to stuff Matt, a Matt Breeder run behind the line of scrimmage. New defensive line head coach. I mean, listen, he's heaping praise on Thomas in the form of a single scream that wasn't for the faint of heart. So again, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, just reporting the news here, right? So far, so good for Hurd, for Thomas, and Bosa are all having positive, positive camps right now. And again, you know, he's not going to be a start on the defensive line. You guys can see the defensive line depth chart right now. Now, they will move it around, right? I mean, you got Ford, you got Armstead, you got Buckner, DJ Jones, Nick Bosa, uh, Solomon Thomas again. Where are they all going to fit? It's kind of a, an example of what it could look like, but they're going to rotate them around. But Thomas can play his way to more playing time. I mean, if he's playing well, you might as well leave him out there. So at least we're getting good news so far on how he is going or how he's looking at training camp. All right, moving on here. I, I, I can consider talking about G Jimmy G because uh, there's been conflicting reports on how he's looked, but I decided it's Jimmy G. Let's talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. He has been up and down. Everything I've seen and read, very up and down so far from Jimmy Garoppolo. On day two, all right, which is Sunday, he missed a bunch of throws in 11 on 11, was picked off later in the day, was not sharp at all. Now, early on Monday, the reports were that he was much better, very sharp, led touchdown drives, had a nice deep ball, but then progressed later on in the practice. So it's not been 
an excellent start for Jimmy Garoppolo so far. And, and Kyle Shanahan was asked about this um, in terms of, you know, getting back with the pads on and seeing how the, everyone looks. He said, quote, there was, uh, there was a lot of it. It was kind of a mess out there too. I'm very excited to get the pads on tomorrow. This was on Sunday. It's much easier to block people when there's pads on. Makes it a little bit cleaner. I hope we can give him some cleaner looks. Again, he's talking about Jimmy Garoppolo not having a very clean pocket as well as he's throwing the ball in 11 on 11s. The pocket is really hard for the training camps that I've been at in the National Football League because they can't hit the quarterback and they really don't want you to get that close. So you can see a guy scream off the edge and he still gets the ball away. And in reality, that's a sack of the National Football League. Now again, are all the bad throws attributed to, you know, the offensive line struggling? I'm not gonna say that because again, what I saw is that uh, he made some iffy throws. He was a little bit up and down. So it's early, it's fine. Let's not panic at all yet. I just wanted to report that these guys are looking good. Thomas Bosa heard. And so far, it seemed like Jimmy Garoppolo's been a little bit up and down at the quarterback position. Question for you guys. I don't know if this is injury related or not. Do you think Garoppolo will play all 16 games this season? Will he not miss a start? Type Y for yes, type N for no, down below. Okay, final headline here. I wanted to get a couple of, of wide receivers bunched together because there's a bunch of wide receiver news not named Jalen Hurd. And it's the fact that Couple guys' stocks are up, and one guy's stock is trending a little bit down right now. Jordan Matthews apparently is having a fantastic first couple days of training camp. Again, the wide receiver, the free agent signed, who was in Philadelphia last year and formerly with the Buffalo Bills, plays that kind of herd slot position. He's looked great. All the reports are saying that he has been fantastic. I even there's, there's even one guy who was saying that he believes it's a hundred one one beat writer. I forget who it was. 100% Matthews is going to make the team. He's just been that good. And again, he was like one of the leading receivers in the entire SEC with for uh, Vanderbilt when he was in college. So he has the the talent, never really stood up to that in Buffalo or Philadelphia, but maybe, you know, you always turn a page with a new team. But Matthews has looked absolutely fantastic. The guy who's not looked good is Dante Pettis. Pettis has been very up and down, rough couple days, and has dropped a ton of passes that he should be catching. And it seems like the confidence is really lost right now early on with Dante Pettis. Uh, Kyle Shannon was asked about Dante. He said, quote, I want to see him, him improve a lot. I've got a lot of belief in Dante, but I don't think he's there yet. I think there's a whole other level that he can reach. He needs to do it with size, with mentality, and just getting after it every single day. Again, everything I watched, everything I saw, read, the whole report on Dante Pettis, struggle. And it seems like his confidence is really, really shook right now, or shaken, however you want to say it. I think shook right now is the proper term. Um, but it, it's not good. And so far, it's not been a good camp overall for Dante Pettis, who I've said, I think could have a massive year. I think it could be a dark horse, you know, top, not top, but you know, top 15 receiver in the NFC. He could be the number one receiver for this team. I need him to have a big year. We need him to have a big year. But so far, and again, all this is early. You take it with a grain of salt because it is training camp, but he has not looked that good, and it might be because the confidence is down just a little bit. Now, again, let's just wrap it up here. That's all, that's all the news I have for you today, but let's just wrap it up saying this is all training camp stuff. You can look terrible in training camp. You can lose all your preseason games and still be an elite team, okay? So let's not get too carried away, but this is what people are seeing as of the first couple days of training camp, and I wanted to give you guys all the latest here on Chat Sports covering the 49ers, as I always do. Before we leave, be sure to subscribe to the 49ers report on the, the new YouTube channel, www.chatsports.com forward slash 49ers. Go subscribe. That way, if you're watching this on Chat Sports and you just want 49ers content as well, maybe a little extra bonus content, go on over to the new channel, hit subscribe, help us out. We'll help you out with fresh new videos. It's a win-win overall. Again, I'm Thomas Mott. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at RealThomasMott, for all the latest and breaking news that I have for you guys. And of course, subscribe to Chat Sports. Plenty more 49ers videos upcoming later this week because, baby, we're back. Training camp is ready to roll. And again, fresh haircut for training camp as well. Many of you guys probably noticed that. For, for, for Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. That's it for this for today's uh, 49ers report. More to come later in the week. We'll see you when we get back for another Flesh Fresh News and Rumors video. Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.